I'm going to be walking you guys through from start to finish on how I do an interior render. Um, so we'll be working from the previous series, which was an exterior night shot. Um, well, it was more like dusk. Um, and I'll show you the render here. Um, and I've actually done a few different variations of that, um, which I might do behind the scenes of eventually. Um, but we're going to be doing a interior um, render. Uh, it might take uh, a wee while to get to the final result, but um, I think you guys are going to learn a heap from how I um, model everything and how I render and do lighting. And I'm going to be just showing you guys the whole process um, from start to finish. Um, and the reason why I wanted to film these kinds of videos is because I haven't found too many um, when I was first starting out and, you know, trying to learn and everything. So um, I just wanted to kind of um, film my process and share the kind of knowledge that I've accumulated over the years. So that's enough talking. Um, let's get into it. So I'm in, if, if you guys are wondering how I set my scene up and everything, um, I do recommend you check out my previous series um, and just have a look at how I set everything up. I'm in this file at the moment, which is basically an architecture file that has the building and um, like no environment or nothing else like that. So what I what I typically do is I separate the um, environment out from the building and then I combine it together. I link the two files together. So um, yeah, but but for an interior scene, I don't think we need to worry about that, but we may want to see the outside, so that's something that we can tackle later on. So, um, and also, uh, kind of new setup, I've moved location, so um, still kind of work in progress. The lighting's probably not going to be amazing and stuff like that, but um, that's not why you're here, so that's just uh, yeah, behind the scenes. So, um, yeah, so I'm in, I'm in my scene now, and... We're going to start out just kind of mapping out um, the different furniture and everything like that. So, I mean, in the previous project, I did already map this out, but I just want to spend a little bit more time and um, gather gather my thoughts about this. So, um, obviously, if you guys have seen the previous, um, the previous series, we had a render from this direction. Um, and we're basically going to be having a look at how I would render something looking back at the kitchen. Um, I've done quite a few renders like this. Um, you can have a look at these ones here um, and check out my Instagram at Oliver Higgins Architecture um, if you want to check out my other renders as well. Um, and yeah, so I've got these cool windows here. Um, they're kind of just you know, pretty, pretty thin windows which have cladding um, over the top and it just allows that kind of interesting um, kind of vibe from the outside. So you kind of see the light at night time, but it's kind of, it's hidden a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to do is we've got this bench at the back here. Um... This is 400 deep. No, it's eight 800 deep. It's a meter high, so it's a little bit too high. I'm going to go 0 0.9. So most um, like kitchen bench tops are around 900 high. Well, at least that's what I like to do. Um, and depending on where you are in your country, uh, like what country you're in, you'll, you'll have different standards. I'm just going to clean this wall up um, and just bring this across. Um, if you guys are just starting out, like in Blender, and you're like, what what the heck's going on? Maybe check out um, Blender Guru's tutorials on just basic modeling, and then um, come back and watch this, and you'll be in a better position. Um, yeah, this is more towards, uh, you know, directed towards intermediate and advanced um, people. Cool, so we've got this at the end. I kind of imagine a um, kind of a standard kitchen there and I think we're going to have like an island here uh, we're going to make that 1200 away it's going to be a meter and then probably a dining table and um, a couch kind of in this area here 
so i actually think i don't want this timber to be inside again hopefully it doesn't crash cool awesome i think I'm not sure about that window there it might be might be okay um so I think um, the vibe that I want from this design is going to be very like a lot of plaster, like Venetian plaster finish, very minimal because the outside of the, you know, the actual architecture, the outside is quite, quite woody. <laughs> it's quite textural. There's a lot of, there's a lot of richness and texture. And I think I want that, oh, we're lost. I want the interior to be very, very like cool and refreshing um, and very like minimal. Um, so that's the vibe I'm, I want to go for. So what I'm going to do to start out is just create a plane. Actually, I might make a box. Um, so shift A to open that menu up. If you, yeah, just check out Blender Guru stuff if you're like really, really beginner. And then come back here and you'll be in a good spot. Um, so I'm just going to make the ceiling real quick. And again, like the purpose of these videos is to show everything so you may be like oh he's you know it's kind of boring but i really wish there were people that did you know full videos and didn't didn't like hide anything and didn't speed things up so you know i guess i'm just uh creating these videos with past me in mind if that makes sense um and that was kind of my learning style i, I loved just to watch people that um, I liked their work, I like to watch them work, um, so yeah, I've got that ceiling in there now, um, and what I'm going to do, I'm not going to model couches or tables or chairs or anything, uh, but I will be modeling like the cabinetry and the kitchen and all that, so I think this is a good one, I think, um, yeah, yeah, I kind of like this style, so I'm just going to copy that, I'm going to chuck it in the scene, snap down snap down and i really recommend you guys get your get your furniture in as soon as you can because um it just gives you scale on what the space feels like and it just gives that kind of human element i'm gonna go 90 degrees and i'm gonna go 1.5 meters back from that edge of the island um oh what happened there i'm gonna go minus one Five oh 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 no. Minus one point five, yeah. And it just—it's quite a generous amount of space, but it just oh, there's another one there. Um, yeah, I just like it, and like the purpose of this building is more of a communal kind of building. It's not actually a house per se. Um, it opens up to like a pool and stuff. Um, the actual dwellings, if you guys have seen, haven't seen my previous kind of start to finish course is um yeah this is like it just a communal area where um two kind of families that are living on the same property can come together and and have shared dinners and stuff like that so with that in mind i think that this table should be probably a little bit bigger um i'm gonna go size on the x-axis um and then I'll probably end up like retexturing, uh, like redoing the UVs anyway. Um, um, and once I get the furniture in, that's kind of when I pick the composition and the camera angle. And then I can, then it just helps me to stay focused and stuff like that. So I want a, I actually want a walkway to be through here. I think that'd be quite cool. So this is going to continue on there. This is going to carry on because that's going to be like a bathroom and, and stuff around there um i think that's gonna be cool and like a butler's pantry and stuff will be like through there that's that's your that's your butler's pantry there and then i think let's do like two meters and then that will be the the powder room so we have this kind of cool cool vibe um and it just helps to show a little bit more dimensionality it's always nice if you're doing a a, a composition where 
you're facing a wall or you're facing some sort of main focal point, it's nice to add kind of a little bit more to the story, something to guide the viewer's eyes and kind of adds a bit of interest. Um, so what I'm going to do, because these are just the basic building blocks, right? I'm going to move this up 700. And... Because that's going to be our overhead cabinetry. And I'm going to bring that all the way to the end. And I'm going to do the same for here. And then, like, the actual wall. Like, all of this will probably be... Um, clad. Just like that. And then there will just be like just big open sliders there. I think I'll have some curtains and stuff so you won't actually see the outside. Um, but I've done quite a few projects where it's just purely an interior scene and you have these beautiful white sheer curtains and it just looks freaking amazing. Um, cool. So I'm going to add this wall back here. Just like that. Let's just double check this dimension. So that's... Yeah, that's uh, it's a little bit tight. Uh, why can't I snap? Let's just bring that there. Okay, so what's this? It's only one meter, so... I suppose it's okay. You want to think about, like if you're designing, you want to think about proportion of the height of the space as well. Because if you do like quite a high ceiling, it makes everything look like really narrow because of the height. So, I don't know, it's just something to think about. So, I think that's starting to look good. What I'm going to do is just create a camera um, and mesh camera. And then, and circle into that camera. Um... And like once you create a camera, if you want to kind of snap it to the view that you want, you make sure you get the camera selected and you go control alt zero. And that should just snap it in a good position. Um, so quite like this. And I think I want to see if I can get some of that, you know, the slit window. Maybe I need to add another one, but I definitely want to get that in the view, I think that'll look cool. So this is a 40 millimeter focal length. I might go 35. Yeah, I think that's starting to look quite good. So let's just start out with that. I'm not sure which fabric this is. Shader editor, that's white. Yeah, because I'm if I'm gonna do like a, um, quite a white plaster wall finish, I think I want like a, something with a little bit of color. So I think I'll go with like a natural leather, leather finish. So I've copied that. Um, I get most of my furnit furniture, if not all of my furniture off the Blender Marketplace, by the way, if you guys are wondering. Um, Got to think about placing this. So what? sometimes when I'm placing furniture, I'll go into bird's eye view and then I'll go into like, <laughs> you can barely see that. Maybe I'll go on side view. Yeah, okay. So, I'm going to, again, I'm going to do the 1.5 from there. I think that's quite good. And then, oh, it's a little bit tight. If I feel like I need more space just for the composition, I'll just like push everything back. And I do actually feel that I need more space, so I might just push that back. Um, just going to select all of this. Um, I'm going to give it like a meter. All right. Um, Why 
fuck is going on? Cool, so let's go back to the cat. Yeah, that feels quite good. And then I think something I typically do is face create like another um I'm not sure actually. I might just can't duplicate that and rotate. Let's just see what that looks like for that composition. It's alright. That might be okay, but we may flip it. Alright, so I'm in another project right now. Um, it looks a bit weird just because of the view, ma view mode I've got on at the moment. But I'm just going to copy a few elements from here. Um, just like the rag and the table I used. Um, just to make selection. Because I... Um, I really like the render that I did for this. Um, wonder if I, I might actually copy that dining table as well and just replace it because I think it's it's nicer to have it a little bit bigger. Um, so I'm just going to select all that, copy, and I'm going to chuck that in here. So I'm going to just delete that dining table. Because I think if it's a communal space, we definitely want it to be a little bit bigger. All right. Okay. Let's just make sure. Yeah, that's good. Cool. And then... I'm going to just select that, chuck that in, and that should be good. You won't actually really be able to see the dining table, it's just for, uh, actually, no, nah. <laughs> no you won't. What I might do is just feel like that's, there's just a little bit too much space there, so I'm going to bring that forwards. That feels that feels nice. Um, I just want to see my L shape set up. That does actually feel way better. So I'm gonna do an L shape couch. Um, and it's worth noting that this would this may potentially change if I were to do a different camera angle. Um, but for this composition, I think it works to to do this. And so I want to just make sure that there's enough space. What's that? That's like 800. So we want to shift all of these couches back to allow for kind of a walkway space. Cool. So I'm going to bring that forward. Yeah, that's probably fine. Yeah. I like how you kind of enter into the lounge. It's very casual, and that's the point of of this space. Yeah, and I like I like that look, that kind of dining, uh, not dining, uh, little whatever it is, coffee table. Cool, so this is starting to feel quite nice, and... Um, what I might do right away is also, I think I have in that other file, some curtains, but that's about it. It's <laughs> about all I can say about it, it's good. Um, I don't know, there's probably a, a huge amount that you can find on the Blender Marketplace. Um, there's so much good stuff there. And if you do it right, you're going to save yourself so much time and it won't even really be that expensive. Um, it's way better than Turbo Squid, I reckon. So what I'm going to do here is it's it, we're going to have kind of a recessed curtain track. So I'm actually going to... Yeah, that's going to be nice. 
what I'm going to do is actually narrow, narrow the curtains up a little bit. Well, they're more like sheer, they'll be more like sheer curtains. Um, and then I'm going to just shift this across. Let's have a look and yeah, that looks nice. We're just going to turn this whole thing into sheer curtains and that's just going to bring in some beautiful diffuse light so just out of curiosity we're going to jump into cycles and let's have a look there'll probably be some materials missing so there'll probably be like some purple stuff yeah just because I um, copied stuff from other projects, but that's alright. Um, what was the HDRI that I used in that one, other one? Hmm. I definitely want to find a nice overcast HDRI. Uh, that's good. Okay. So what I'm going to do... Let's just change that to a different fabric for now. Um, I'm just going to delete this because um, I'll probably add that al those elements back using the polygon plugin. That way they'll have the materials on them. Um, okay, so I'm just going to add, I'm going to duplicate that and then move it back because that's actually the cladding. Um, that's like for the rain screen. If I go out of this real quick, that's actually to sh for the rain screen to have something to see against it so we're gonna have to add an actual like layer of um whatever so i'm gonna go into polygon um and i'm gonna have a look at a rammed earth material i think this one's quite good i'm just gonna apply that i think i need to um just do a quick applied transformations Mark seam, unwrap, and then set the TD. If you guys are wondering what that was, maybe have a look at my previous uh, walkthrough. Right, so. I also want to do that for this one. Just so that we have kind of a and um, a good neutral kind of color palette that we can see things with which is really important so that you can see things objectively all right um, I think it's 18 I'm just gonna go into the viewport shading mode just because it'll be a bit quicker to see the materials. Let's start something. Um, mark seam. All transformations unwrap set TD. I did use the uh, rammed earth material. Well, oh, that curtain material looks sick. Um, I think here, eight eighteen. Okay. And I think on the floor, I'm going to go timber. I don't normally use timber, but it feels like there needs to be some sort of warmth. Um, 18. Mark seam. Unwrap. Scale. Set TD. Oh, not curtain. All right, so this is a good solid foundation to work from. 
uh, got kind of the materials in there and I'm just going to replace this concrete with if I have any timber floor I think they call them parquets or parquets or something I don't know what's that where's my random matched I'm pretty sure I have a random matched one which is really good Oh yeah, random match. I think that one's really good. Let's do that. Why is that purple? 8K, let's just download that and apply it. See if that works. Whoa, that's taking ages to download. Okay. Um, Oh, is my internet really that slow? Okay, let's, um, that's insane. Uh, do I have one there? Let's see if that one works. Yeah, okay. We're going to go with this for now and I'll download that later. That's a nice one anyway. So let's go back into this view. Um, fabric gray, I'm not sure about that. Fabric. Um, what I might do is go back into fabric gray. I'm gonna make a copy. And then I'm going to just change the hue to more of a green. Um, or maybe... Wait, what is that? That's for the albedo. Okay, so why? Hmm. What happens if I just put that straight on? Oh, okay, it's a, like a weird mix shader. Okay, what's this? Okay, I'm just going to change it to that. Let's have another look in cycles. See how it's coming along. And we're going to finish off by just having a quick look at the materiality, uh, not the materiality, the lighting, and just kind of see where that's going. I'm going to close some of these down. Is there anything else I want from here? Maybe eventually. Cool. Okay. So obviously it looks a bit weird right now, but it's a good start. I'm just going to bump up the exposure. That's kind of the vibe that we want. Kind of an overexposed, diffused light. I'm going to have a quick look at this curtain shader. Just play around with the translucency. And maybe if I... Yeah, there we go. That's more like it. 2.5 exposure. Yeah, that's quite quite nice and then I think at the back if I have like maybe maybe just like indi an indication of like light some sort of like you can kind of see here um, if 
if I bring this out. Ah, oh, yeah, I guess you can't. What if I bring this back? So that's kind of the vibe potentially that I want. Except if I um bring this back. I want kind of bounce light in the background. Not like I don't want you to actually be able to see like a proper view or anything. But something that will bounce light. Um just extend that all the way through I'm just gonna delete that material for now because it's kind of contrasting a little bit too much um, let's just have a quick look Just get out of cycles for a sec, it's pretty hard to see. Um, I'm just gonna make this like 800. Just as gonna, and I might do the same for here. Just cause like, it's nice to have a good kind of solid book end to, to terminate the kitchen. You don't want to have like cabinetry just ending, just like hovering. <laughs> At least that's my, my take on it. So let's just go back into render view have a quick look and then we'll end it here and then next week we're gonna we're gonna take it further and do like the kitchen cabinetry and all that kind of fun stuff okay it's kind of interesting i might just remove that material for now we're just gonna keep it white i'm not sure about that I do a lot of stuff in like cycles, like if I'm in cycles view, I'll just like try things out and just see how it looks. Yeah, not sure about that. Leave it a little bit of, a little bit of light. Yeah, that might be okay. I'm going to just shrink this rug. Because I want to see like more wood flooring. Because, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely from a compositional point of view going to be the thing that balances the view. But I think as like a white model kind of test render, I think that's probably a good spot to, to be in. Um yeah i think what i might do is just bump that exposure back up to like three and then do gamma of 1.2 because it's an interior scene i will make that medium high contrast yeah i think that's probably a good start uh let's just see what it happens if you get rid of one curtain mm, maybe maybe not I kind of like the diffu the diffuse look. Um, I might bring the camera across a little bit, and I'm probably just gonna delete delete that. Yeah, I kind of I kind of like the direction that's heading in. So, uh, yeah. Stay tuned for next week. We're going to be looking at the cabinetry and 
getting into the nitty gritty kind of modeling details. Um, yeah, so we'll see you there. Like and sub and see you next week. Cheers.